And today we have something special outlined and I have special speakers with me today. Uh, let's um, let our speaker, Prof. Yusof from Multimedia University, uh, say hi, Prof. Okay, that's Prof. Yusof. And also with us is Encik Hanif Ngadi from the Sustainable Energy Development Authority or SEDA. Encik Yusof say hi. Eh, salah. Encik Hanif. Okay. Encik Hanif dah kata hi. So that's Prof. Yusof then Encik Hanif. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning everybody. Um, yeah, hopefully everybody is having a lovely Friday morning. Yeah, uh, thank you so much to Miss Natalia for their introduction. Um, and thank you for joining us this morning. This is the third series in the um, for the Mingo Science Negara. So let me share my slides first. Okay, so my name is Prof. Dr. Muhammad Yusuf bin Alias from Multimedia University. Um, the topic that I'm going to take you through today is the journey through IR 4.0. So hopefully everybody will be ready for this journey, right? So before we go much deeper into this topic, I have one question for everybody, right? So the question that I'm going to ask you is probably something that you have seen before. Yeah, if you have joined the lecture, the, the talk on Wednesday by Chek Guli, she also asked the exact same question. What do you think will be your job in the future? Or what do you think you will be doing in the future? Doesn't matter five years, 10 years from now, depending on whether you are in the primary school or secondary school. So to answer this question, please go to slido.com uh, or you can scan the QR code that is given in the slide. Yeah. And then type in the event code 62684. Right. So if you manage to go into slido.com, let me share the, um, the window and see how many people have actually joined in. Yeah, so we can see there are doctors, surgeons, pharmacists, businessmen, prime minister. Wow, they're very good. That is very ambitious, good ambition. Uh, programmer, engineer, we have scientists and so on. Okay, so please keep on answering this question. Right? For the time being, we will not be discussing the answers yet. All right, so you will have to wait until towards the end of my talk today. Then we'll go back and see why did I ask this question and why you will need to know about this. Yeah, and what is it? Uh, what is the relationship between this question to IR 4.0? So you probably are asking these questions, right? Okay, so let's go back to my slide. Uh, let's continue back with our journey. Yeah. Well, most of you are answering that questions. So let's continue with our journey to IR 4.0. So what is IR 4.0, right? Okay, so you probably have seen uh, the word IR 4.0 everywhere. It's in the newspaper, it's on TV, uh, it's been talked about by um, a lot of people. Probably your teachers um, are talking about it in schools when they are teaching biology or physics or any science classes. They were talking about IR 4.0, IR 4.0, or sometimes it's called Industry 4.0. But what does IR 4.0 mean? Yeah? What does the word IR mean? What do you think? Uh, so you can shout out in the uh, chat box. What do you think the word IR means? Yeah, IR 4.0. Is it a new member of BTS or a new group member of uh, Blackpink? Or do you think it's uh, one of the characters in Among Us or, or PUBG or Roblox that you are playing? Right? So what is IR 4.0? So what is? Let's look at the first word. The first two letters, I and R. So what does I mean and what does R mean? Yeah. So the letter I stands for industrial, right? So when we're talking about industrial, the first thing that came to our mind is probably is related to factory, right? And it's actually true. 
So industrial means something that we are uh, something like a production, something like uh, producing things that we can use in every, our everyday life. And actually, industries are not just related to factories. Industries can be also talking about um, agriculture industry. You're talking about transportation. You can be talking about nowadays telecommunication industry. So industries can mean a lot of other things, but most of the time, it will be related to the factory because this is where all our products are coming from. So you're talking about machines, you're talking about the clothes that we wear, the things that we use every day in our everyday life. So industrial are the words that is related to factories or things that are made out of factories, right? And then the second word R means revolution. So what is revolution? It's a very strong word, actually. So when we're talking about revolution, people will think about, oh, the French Revolution or the American Revolution, where they are doing a, a change in the political organization, overthrowing the government of the ruler of that country, or that kind of thing. But the word revolution actually means a sudden or a radical or complete change of things. That is what it means by revolution. You can also be revolutioning yourself, changing yourself to become better. That is revolution. So when you combine these two together, industrial revolution is a radical change or a sudden change or a complete change of the whole industries. If it is only a minor change, Right? Just a small change, like for example, if you change the light bulb or if you change the telephone line or if you change the door, that is not called revolution. Revolution is a radical, means it's a very sudden and a complete change. Right? Then there is the letter 4.0 or some people call it 4.0. Regardless of which one you prefer to call it, right? it can be 4.0, it can be 4.0. Right? So what this 4.0 means 4.0 means it's the fourth industrial revolution, or it's 4.0. So if there is a 4.0, then there must be a 3.0, a 2.0, and a 1.0, or else you cannot straight away jump into 4.0. So what was the third industrial revolution? What was the second industrial revolution? Or oh, when does this industrial revolution actually started? Okey, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera adik-adik dan para pendengarlah semua eh. Okey. Jadi apa tibalah jiran saya untuk membentangkan slide saya lah apa tugas yang diamanahkan iaitu untuk membincangkan tentang tajuk prospektif kerjaya eh, yang berkaitan dengan tenaga restari. Okey, saya harapkan adik-adik di rumah jaga uh, kesihatan ya. Yeah. Bila berada ada urusan di luar tu, pastikan semuanya uh, mengikut SOP yang uh, di di apa di di, di, di nasihatkan lah oleh pihak uh, kuasa eh, berkuasa. Okey, saya terus kepada slide perbentangan saya. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, saya harap di luar sana nampak eh selat per, uh, per, perbentangan saya ni. Jadi tajuk yang diamanahkan. Uh, adalah untuk kita membincangkan tentang prospektif kejaya berkaitan tentang tenaga dan setari. Okey, adik-adik. Uh, tajuk ni sebenarnya sangat spesifik kepada tenaga dan setari lah. Apa kejaya yang kita boleh cepuri selepas alam pembelajaran kita menerusi tenaga dan setari ataupun kita punya sustainable energy lah. 
Jadi kalau kita bercakap tenaga lestari ni ada dua perkara. Yang pertama sama ada kita uh, energy efficiency, uh, kecakapan tenaga ataupun renewable energy. Itu tenaga boleh baharu. Uh, jadi dua-dua perkara ini adalah berkaitan tenaga lestari. Uh, jadi untuk yang topik yang kita nak bincangkan ni tenaga lestari ni kita akan pergi dalam terus kepada uh, satu topik khusus iaitu Uh, renewable energy, tenaga boleh baharu. Okay, uh, sebelum saya uh, kita buat apa, mengkaji atau menyemak fakta-fakta, uh, jadi saya perkenalkan diri saya dululah, nama saya Hanif bin Yadi, uh, saya adalah seorang jurutera, uh, mempunyai pengalaman lebih kurang 20 tahun dalam pemuliharaan tenaga, tenaga uh, dan sekarang bekerja di Seda Malaysia. Seda Malaysia itu adalah Sustainable Energy Development Authority Malaysia dan di uh, bahagian operasi pasaran lah. Okay. okay, kita ada Papa Zola dekat sini. Jadi dalam kita apa uh, menyemak atau mengkaji tajuk yang kita nak bincangkan ni, uh, kita mesti faham lah, kita mesti ada tujuan. Kita mesti ada tujuan, lepas tu nanti kita akan pergi ke dalam mencari fakta tu, kita uh, perhatikan apa maklumat-maklumat yang kita boleh uh, gunakan sebagai panduan kita dan nanti di akhir pembentangan ni, adik-adik dan kita semua nanti akan dapat uh, uh, melihat apa kesimpulan ni, keputusan dan kesimpulan yang berkaitan dengan tajuk kita. Jadi tujuan... Uh, Uh, tujuan kita ni adalah untuk kita kenal dan adaptasi, fahami apa itu tenaga lestari atau lebih kepada spesifik kepada renewable energy, tenaga boleh baru dan akhirnya apa yang kita boleh kaitkan dengan prospektif kejaya kita. Okay? Jadi dalam kita mengkaji ni, uh, Papa Zola pun ada bercakap, kebenaran tak pernah cakap kosong. Okay? Adik-adik? Okay. So kita terus kita mengkaji, kita akan buat perha- uh, pemerhatian yang pertama lah. Uh, jadi uh, untuk soalan yang pertama ni, uh, tahukah adik eh, adik-adik, mana yang lebih penting, api ataupun air? Uh, kalau kita lihat situasi semasa sekarang ni eh, baru-baru ni kita di di apa uh, tengah hangat diperkatakan isu berkenaan air lah eh, di uh, di Selangor ni lah khususnya kan uh, dan juga kadang-kadang kita pun ada pengalaman juga tak ada api api ni maksudnya ni air lah kan air, air sorry api ni adalah elektrik kan eh? elektrik jadi mana yang lebih penting api ataupun air dalam kehidupan kita uh, ok ya eh? jadi ya, abang nak beritahu lah sebenarnya dua-dua ni adalah penting uh, tak kisahlah Boboiboy api ke, boboiboy air ke, dua-dua ni sama penting. Sebab apa? Okey, tanpa api, air tu kita sebenarnya tak boleh nak disalurkan kepada pengguna. Sebab kita gunakan pam, ha, eh? pam tu menggunakan kuasa elektrik. Ha, maksud abang tadi tu api lah, ha, kuasa elektrik. Jadi tanpa pam, air tidak, da- uh, tidak dapat disalurkan. Ha, jadi pentingnya api tadi tu. Air pun begitu juga, penting juga untuk api sebab dalam sistem penjanaan api itu sendiri kita perlukan air. Eh? Air adalah satu elemen penting dalam sistem penjanaan api. Ha, sama ada dia sebagai sistem penyujukan ataupun medium untuk kita uh, uh, menukarkan satu tenaga ke tenaga yang lain. Ha, okay? Jadi ada adik kena ingat api ataupun uh, Tenaga elektrik itu uh, sama penting dengan air. Dua-dua terbaik. Okey, mari kita menyusuri lagi uh, apa yang dikatakan dengan air itu. Unsur air. Unsur air ataupun kita panggil molekul H2O. Ianya terdiri daripada uh, dua atom hidrogen dan juga satu atom oksigen. Ha, jadi macam mana kita nak tahu ni? Ha, ini adik-adik mesti dah belajar kan di tingkatan satu. Ha, tadi abang baru tanya anak abang tadi tu ada seorang tu dia baru tingkatan satu. Dia kata dah belajar belum dia ni? Dah masuk uji kaji belum? Dia kata dah. Ha, tingkatan satu dah belajar ni. Macam mana kita nak 
pecahkan atom-atom yang terkandung dalam air. Jadi melalui proses penguraian air, elektrolisis. 